I think there's a misconception of what Izinkabi are. Izinkabi are not people who are living in the hostel. No, they are people that are killers that have been convicted for crimes that will never ever get out of jail. Assassins, that, right? Well, assassins. Assassins, yes. Yeah. They're sitting in prison right now. And what happens is that our correctional officers get paid to release these people so they can commit these crimes and then they capture them. They recapture them, they go back. Are you serious? Yes. That's why you cannot you, you can't track them down. This is the hustler's corner. Yes, I've been buying booze, which Angel is common. Yes, Sinan Apparat. It doesn't matter which Sinan Apparat. I think you, I think you start. Yeah, no, that's what I'm starting with. I want you to, no, I'm saying I want you to intro that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, we're back. People have been asking, yo, what is inside this bag? This bag is a Y generation. Nah. And it, as you can see, which if it's really because every time youngster says, yo, let me get you a new bag, I say, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I want the first one that you gave me, and I want it until, like, it is it poop, a young kid. So that's from Youngster CPT. Youngster CPT oh. gave me this. So we're recording? Yeah. Oh, so, okay, cool. So you start the episode. Start no, it. no. I was just saying that Youngster CPT, you know, all his branding and everything else, who Youngster is a guy who was protected from gangsterism by the gangsters because of his rap talent. He inherited that from Upeni. Upeni, because of his soccer talent, he was protected by the gangsters in Hanover Park so that he doesn't get involved in gangsterism. But in Dwana we want him to play soccer, we want him to go to four trials and everything else. He's very talented. He's going to make it out of here, you know. So when I wear this, it is for that representation that, you know, about youngster CPT never get. Because U Youngster, when he comes onto a festival lineup at Josie or Durban, wherever he may perform, he wears his entire city on his back. And South African hip hop's origins, you know, stem from um, Cape Town 40 years ago, you know. Um, so people have been asking, what is inside this bag? No, there's nothing like of a weapon or anything of the sort inside this bag. This is just me just making sure that everywhere I go, I carry Youngster CPT with me. And I give him the representation that many people from Cape Town don't get. You know what I mean? So this is just support. No, nice. That's what it is. But otherwise, how no, are you I'm, feeling? I'm, I'm good and I'm, I'm, I'm lovely. I think I thought I, I I I was expecting you to you know look at the camera do the intro. <laughs> I want to see how you do that, fella. I, I'm, not tra- I'm not a trained broadcaster, but you know. No, I'm welcome. training. I'm training you. Yeah, so welcome but, but, to the but, hustlers but, corner. But 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 Afterwards, you know, during the week, you've seen some of the clips and everything else. You've seen some of the snippets that are trending on the timeline. If you're watching this right now, just press the like button, press the subscribe button, press the notification bell, and share it in your family WhatsApp group. Everybody hates Nota. Where does that name come from? It's a caricature. I know about the one that got Chris Rock. Everybody hates Chris. Yeah. I stole it from that. Why? Because I wanted to create a caricature that I could use to base... Um, a book on, a memoir. And I wanted to create a memoir that's also not just a memoir, but a textbook. And um, I've been looking for, you know, the longest time to find a co-writer to assist me with writing a memoir and a textbook called Everybody Hates Nota. And um, luckily, I stumbled upon um, an author (laughs) that you introduced me to, you know, who I can never agree with, but, you know, we get along very well. Um, Penwell. Uh, so finally, um, we're starting with the journey. Everybody hates Nota. Um, from the f- Tuesday, the 21st of March, the day after my birthday, um, we're going to start going on Twitter spaces and start sharing some of that memoir. And that's all it is. But I mean, also knowing that I'm also a polarizing figure, somewhat, you know, um, I had to create a moniker that at least could brand me in a way where when I get hate, I don't reject it. Or I don't feel like, oh, I want my Zonda. It's like something that I have brought upon myself so I can manage it and I can control it. And I won't lie, everywhere I go, I get so much love. You know, I get so much love. I get so much appreciation. Um, and I think um, that memoir itself is that a lot of people look to um, people who are in the music business as music executives to write books, you know, or to write... Um, uh, 
about their life stories, right? <laughs> trust, but, trust no, the hotelity and respect back. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Sorry to disturb you. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. <laughs> I'm a little teapot. Um, so um, I think for me, I was like, how can I take all this knowledge that I've gained through my life experience and then allow other people to then take it and internalize it and then, you know, stand on top of my shoulders to reach where I could never reach, you know? So that's why I created this caricature. That's why I created this Everybody Hates Nota uh, thing. And, and that's the memoir and the book that we'll be um, dropping on my birthday or just in time for my birthday um, in 2024. Nice. So number two, when do we know when Nota is Nota? When do we know when it's a caricature or character? No, no, no. I'm always myself. I'm always myself. Like the caricature is what people make of me. So the caricature is what people... People take Nota, and then they make Nota whatever they want him to be. You know what I mean? So when it's everybody hates Nota caricature, people love that everybody hates Nota caricature, or they hate it. You know what I mean? Or oh, it's polarizing, whatever it is. But that's their caricature to make whatever they will of. It's just like DJ Spoo. You know that DJ Spoo belongs to the people. You don't yeah. even know who DJ Spoo is. Because yeah. every time you meet someone, you meet what their impression of DJ Spoo is, you know what I mean? Every yeah. single um, day. So I've also been meeting whatever the impression of Everybody Hates Nota is. And um, yeah, I, I think that people are showing appreciation and people are learning that, you know what, we can have diverse views, but we don't have to disrespect one another when we disagree. Are you a cloud chaser? I'm getting a lot of yeah. people who say every time when there's a trending topic, Nota sort of always somehow finds a way to use his intelligence to make himself relevant. Yeah, no, they say that. And that's just people who are jealous, people who've got inferiority complex issues because they'll take my story of Sim Dope and they say he's making it about himself. I never made that story about myself. I'm making it about how tough of a guy Sim Dope was and why everyone who met him thought he was so cool. I was contextualizing from my own personal perspective, right, why I thought Sim Dope was a character that's larger than life. And contextualizing why a, a guy as great as AKA would then see it fit to, you know, make an ode to him in a song and, um, and honor him in that way, you know, because people won't, won't get it. You know, if, if AKA makes a song about Sim Dope and then Sim Dope comes at his memorial and says, yo, this guy, you know, he said he immortalized me. And then everybody looks through Sim Dope's history. It's very easy to dismiss him as your regular cheese boy. And that's not what he was to us. And I wanted to sh um, show that this guy is actually a very humble guy, down to earth, well raised, and has been an inspiration to many brothers, um, myself included. And if you're from the north, you should know Sim Dope. But a lot of people, like, obviously were introduced to him for the first time. And I, I never knew that so many people didn't know that Sim Dope was actually a real person. You know what I mean? So I was humanizing him in that way as well. You know, talking about how he got his scar. It's the same way when um, Cesar Drama went on to Podcast and Chill and explained how he got his scar, you know? Um, that's another story that humanizes someone. And I thought that that little tidbit was some information that people uh, needed. And also my primary school friends chipped in and said, hey, I remember that day. And it was a legendary day. The fact that a guy fell from a tree, got hurt, got stitches, and then came back to school immediately after, that showed us that, yo, Sim Dope is another animal. You know, not to call him an animal, but he's just another beast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on last week's episode, you openly shared about your episode of uh, being institu institutionalized. Yeah. And like I think, section 33. Yeah. And when we titled the episode, as you said, we wrote a mental asylum. Mm. Um, we also, I think, uh, jokingly, I also mentioned, you know, and so, yeah. so what I want to talk about is pe people who care about you, because I also find a lot of people care about you, and that's mm. including my mother. Are you okay? Yeah. Are, you, are you fine? Like, because I care, I care about all of you guys. You know, so, some of me, my generation raised you guys, we raised you guys. And for me, I love you guys the same. I'm like a like a man, like a parent. I love all of you guys. I was even saying to some celebrities who are attacking me over the past week, mm. why are you giving Nota a, a platform to spew bile? That's what they're saying. Mm. Why are you giving Nota a platform? At, at the back of my mind, I'm like, geez, these guys have not listened to me and Nota. No, they and have. I, I, let me tell you, let me mm -hmm. finish talking. I felt so disrespected that they would attack me for having you on the platform 
when they've never listened to you and I's conversations on the platform. If you go back to from the first episode that Nota visited the Hustlers Corner, maybe over a year ago or whenever it was, to only attack us now, many times later that Nota has been here, and every other time that we've had a conversation with Nota, it's not the normal conversations that you would have Nota having with any other person on any other platform. So for mm. me, I took it as I took it as people who have not listened to an album, who have listened to one single or two singles mm. and say an album is trash. Mm. Or people who... Listen to the intro. Yeah, or people who would use one or two, three verses about the Bible and say the Bible is trash. Mm. So I was like, clearly you have not listened to the conversations that I've had with Nota on the Hustlers Corner. Have you ever heard Nota name drop people or spew bile about anybody on this platform. No. Have you ever heard Nota speak nonsense or swear or say all these things that you are accusing him of on this platform? No. no. And then the other thing that I said is, are you aware that I haven't been on Twitter for over a year? <laughs> a lot of the things that happen on Twitter or what you guys would see or, or experience out there, I don't know about them. And what, also actually, number what happened four, to your account? Is, are you still getting it back? I'm still working on it. Yeah, we're, yeah. Still, we're gonna get it back. It's been a year, but also it's been it's been a great opportunity for it's me peace, to just. But you were trending, Ubonin. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> my daughter. Can you believe my Sing daughter? Eko. My daughter <laughs> shows me that. And the, are you also not on Twitter? No, my account was also suspended. Oh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll come back. So, another thing that I wanted to add also was, I kind of felt um, it's unfair. Because it means you guys don't listen to myself and Nota's conversations. It means you, some of you guys actually don't even know the other side of Nota. Mm. And you have not given yourself a chance to listen to him. Because sometimes you just say something is trash, but you have not listened to it. You mm. can't say claim an album is trash when you haven't listened to the album. So for me, it's, it's you know, industry peers who would say such things. And my, my response was on Facebook. And I was like, there was a point when I was written off off of this industry. Mm. Nobody wanted to associate with me. Nobody wanted to touch me. Mm. Nobody wanted to help me. And people just, you know, painted me with a brush and just dismissed me and just thought it was over. Mm. And God did. You mm. know, the fact that I'm sitting here and I'm still doing my thing in the game mm. and I brought myself back, it's because of God. And certain people behind the scenes who are not in this industry who felt the need to sort of contribute in... But uh, to but then with that being said, I don't think that those people who say such understand the amount of intelligence that Nota has. So, I mean, for me, um, like I've learned to turn off the, 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 the um, the knee-jerk reaction to like get angry at those people who misunderstand me. Um, and that's because I learned from you. You know what I mean? I learned from you and I said this to you on the other episode that they didn't watch where I was telling you that you're the one who came in that ne next suit and whatever and got caricatured <laughs> and got dissed and all of that stuff, you know? So you've taken all those bullets and you've shown us how to survive those bullets. So we can't come onto this platform as if we weren't taught by, you know, one of the greatest legends. You know what I mean? So... For me, I think like it's just a badge of honor. It's like a baptism of fire. I, I wear it with pride. Sorry, as I put on another local <laughs> brand. <laughs> Shout out to Didier. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So, so um, I mean, we, it, it's water on a duck's, off a duck's back. I mean, those people will win them over with time. And um, it's about the consistency and just pushing through and taking this criticism and saying, okay, what part of it can we actually use to get better? What part of it can we actually use to mold ourselves into um, um, a better broadcasters, better podcasters, better vodcasters, and just better human beings? I mean, when I first met Upenwell, we disagreed immediately about so many things that- I was had, there, you remember? Yeah, I was yeah, there. I know. And we had many misconceptions well, I hadn't seen his content first, but we had many misconceptions about what we've seen of each other. You know, the limited that we've seen of each other. And um, I said, you know what? Let's give it time. Maybe some of my perspectives are new to you and you haven't explored them yet. But over time, you'll see maybe where I'm coming from or you'll have a different understanding of where I'm coming from. And I'll have the same for you. And we've given each other that space. And I think that that should exemplify what South Africans should be. You know what I mean? Uh, we're a rainbow nation, you know? Um, a lot of the colors of the rainbow are in our flag. And 
we also need to embrace that identity and own it and take ownership of it and not forget who we are and what South Africa's promise was, you know, when this country was founded. And our founding fathers have been the forebears of the type of attitude and the type of posture we should have. I mean, Ditlerk was hand in hand with Dr. Nelson Mandela, um, despite the atrocities committed by his ancestors, despite the atrocities that have been committed against his ancestors by the ancestors of Queen Victoria, you know, um, the ancestors of Cecil John Rhodes and their representatives here um, when they colonized um, our country. So I think our project as um, people who now have a platform that people watch is to actually teach people how to disagree constructively. I think that, that that's all we should do and we should never get too angry. Like, read the comments, troll if you want to troll, make jokes if you want to snap back, I want to snap back so that there's a conversation going. But I mean, I don't take it personally and um, I learned that from you. So I also wanted to say, yeah, and, and I was also saying to some of my followers, like when, when we started with Peño, it was the same. People were very harsh on Peño. Mm. A lot of people were criticizing Peño. A lot of people were mm. saying, why am I working with him? Why mm. am I on this platform? Look at Peño, how he's flourishing mm. now. It's Look, a Peño show. And, and he pu he's putting in work. It's because he puts in work, he's got a, a different mind. And he's, I think people tend to not easily um, accept I don't want to call you guys free thinkers, but people who think differently from the majority of people out there. You yeah, know? alternate thinkers. Alternate thinkers. Or alternate perspectives. Yeah. Which brings me to the next question I, I think I did ask you earlier. Are you a clout chaser? Yeah. So and what is a clout chaser? Exactly. So, like, I'm the exact opposite of a clout chaser. You know, um, I'm clout. I have clout. You know, people know me, people recognize me. And if you search my name on YouTube, you'll find a whole lot of videos where people are using my clout to benefit their platforms. Yeah. Um, I don't need to chase clout. I have never needed to chase clout. Um, and I guess for them to call you a clout chaser is to try and diminish the value that you've got. Um, but, you know, um, I like that and I accept that because all the negative that they share about me means that more people will then know about me and then they can eventually get to the positive. So people will be able to filter through the cloud chaser. I mean, it's only so long you can call someone a cloud chaser before you accept that actually, you know, everything this man touches turns to gold. You yeah. Know I mean, next thing they'll be calling me a Midas chaser, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm chasing the Midas touch. So, um... I accept that as well. I accept that as well. But I mean, I don't do anything that's cloud chasey. It's people that take clips. And it's not clips that are shared by me. They take clips and they cut them up in such a way. Out of context. No, no not direct, to get a reaction out of people. They contextualize it in such a way that they make sure that they take the part that will get a reaction out of people. I mean, last week we were trending, but no one said, oh, you were on the Penwell show and you offered an apology to all Misladi's fans. You know what I mean? And contextualize that clip that they saw. No one said that, oh, they said, no, Mithalia Souza. And that's what trended. You know what I mean? So they can take something and they can look at both of the clips that you're sharing and then they can decide, oh, no, this is the one that will get more traction. So they decided Leom Suzo is the one that must get more traction. And then this apology or this explanation, this contextualization, um, shouldn't get any traction so that we can continue to call this person a misogynist and say he hates women. And let me tell you something. I, I, I earned a new enemy. I inherited an enemy for you. Ungas. I was at Booth again after I got freed. I went to Booth. Oh, so you went out? I went out. Bella, I was trapped for 96 hours. I was behind the steel door. I, I, was, I, was, I had cabin fever. So I went out. I went to Booth first night. I went to Booth second night. The first night I went, and then I, obviously they, they caught me before I could even go to um, uh, Kiernan's uh, funeral. You know, they had me in the cells, and then I came. I, I think I made sure that you missed the funeral because you were waiting for me, unfortunately, and I'm sorry about that. Um, and when I came out, um, I, I took a nap. Uh, after we shot, and then I went back, I said, no, man, I'm going out because I, I want to celebrate my freedom. You know what I mean? When I get to uh, the venue, I don't know, Lakosh. Lakosh is like, yo, no, it's a, Lakosh, what's it? Okay, Ace of Spades, when Ace of Spades, when Ace of Spades, and I'm cool, so. Lakosh, I haven't seen you in a while, bro. <laughs> Sending you love and blessings, sure. So he, he, he boxed 39,000 on Ace of Spades at Booth fast. I didn't even have a sip because um, I don't drink. 
Um, but whoever was there who joined our table, because the sparklers and the lights came on, you know, they enjoyed themselves. They had 1940, whatever it is, um, that they drink, um, the tequila that they drink. And um, the following um, um, moment after the, the champagne comes, because it's lit up, now people can see, oh, no, 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 you know what I mean, in the club. Tenny or Timmy or Timmy, whatever, from Warner comes to me. And I thought it was a fan. So, I mean, I, I'm going out to embrace this person because, like, everyone who meets me wants to give me a hug. So now, how? This one's like, hey, no, no, I'm so kaka when are you been talking nonsense about me on whatever? And I said, who are you? She's like, no, I'm Tenny. I'm like, Tenny from where? Like, no, I'm Tenny from Warner Music. And I said, no, I haven't been talking nonsense about you. You have been talking nonsense about my idols, my heroes. You came all the way from wherever you were working in New York as a lawyer. They gave you a job at Warner Africa. Immediately after I had that um, altercation or whatever, where she came to my table, people came and surrounded her at the bar. She said, hey, no, this is Nota. As well as when, who are you? Before six sous, Allah. Bam sousa, but you know, go wherever you came from. Go back wherever you came from. Because no one is spending 39,000 when you enter the club. I mean, when I walked in, ace of spades, like Gosh said, hey. Nota is here, the authority is here, ace of spades. <laughs> well, uh, ace of spades. After he said ace of spades, the other guys said, all right, authority, yeah, ma. It's in Nami, it's ace of spades, Nami. You know, <laughs> 10 bottles went to the other table. <laughs> yeah, it was a champagne shower. It was, it was like that, you know what I mean? Um, so, Asas, maybe Malium Khulisan. So, Asas. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I expressed my anger, my deep-seated anger. And then I chased her off. And then, guess who walked in? Another Khrutman, Mahuta. Ah, Khrutman. Oh, Mahuta, long time, long so, time Khrutman. You understand? And then yes, I, I, we actually need to sit down with Khrutman, Mahuta. I'm looking forward to that episode. So then I told him what happened. And I said, hey, Khrutman, Mahuta. I'm looking forward to that episode, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sending you love and blessings. Living on second to Khrunta's Khrutman, sure, sure. So I was like, the one thing that I will never do, Mina, as Ndwana Yalona, is allow you guys to be disrespected in your sacrifice to be diminished. I will never allow that. And Mina, anyone that says anything negative or bad about Amar Khrutman Am, I take that fight personally. Whether Ikhrut Manli has or not, I take that fight personally. And that's why when I went at Warner, it was a personal fight because they are destroying an artist's career, they are misleading the artist, and then they are also trying to destroy the legacy that has been built by TS Records, that has been built by uh, a Ghetto Raf, that has been built by many of the quite le legacy labels, the Kalawas of this world. You know, And us as a younger generation, if we do not show the kids how we respect our Ikhrut when we become Khrutmans, the kids will disrespect us. So I need to show the example by respecting Amar Khrutman so that the young guys know when I am a Khrutman to them, that they must show me the same respect they saw so, so me show to our Khrutmans. Because our Khrutmans do this without an industry to support them. You guys are starting to rap. You guys are starting to make music. But there's an industry that's there to catch you. There was no industry for them. There was no money that they were making out of this, you know? And a lot of people look at money and decide that that is what um, determines someone's success. There are many generations, our forebearers, that sacrificed their lives so that we could make money doing what we love. And they will never get a cent. All we can do is give them the deserving respect that they've earned, you know what I mean? For the sacrifices that they've made so that we can feed our families today. We're able to feed our families today because of the sacrifices that you have made. They are able to feed our families today because of the sacrifices that many of your brothers have made. And the moment we show ingratitude for that, all our blessings will be taken away. I like the fact that you're saying, uh, oh, by the way, guys, go check out that episode with Nota and uh, Penuel, the Black Pen, last week, Monday. I think you guys were touching on capitalism. Yeah, capitalism. Yeah. And maybe expand more a little bit well, more. Well, we're talking about the monster that is capitalism. Yeah. We're saying like, uh, capitalism is like a, it's like a bull. It's by in. You know, there's always the female cows and there's the bull. If you've ever, Lusad in Como, if you ever went as Lalin, um, I know my Lokshin brothers, they never get the chance to actually learn these things. But when there's that main bull, that bull is a beast. You cannot tame that beast. It acts in a beastly manner, you know. And you need to find a way to coerce it into doing what you need it to get done. So when you grab a bull by the horns, 
It doesn't mean that you are grabbing a bull and you are just holding on to its horns. No, it means you are now controlling it. That's how you grab a bull. When you want to take down a bull, like inside your yard, and you want to uh, maybe um, inseminate some of the females, you have to grab it by the horns, and then you have to dig your feet into the ground. And then you take it down like that. I don't know if you've ever taken down a bull. No, I haven't. Yeah, but I've, I've seen my uncles do it. Too. Yeah. Well, I mean, as 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 kids, that's what we were taught to do. That was our yeah. strength test. Yeah. You know, um, there's my cousin Koban, um, Eyo, um, in the Eastern Cape, and um, shout out to Koban Cha Cha. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I grew I, yeah. up with him, but okay. anyway, that's another no. Kobani. Okay, yeah, yeah. This one is Mkhubata, Khatebe. Um, so uh, he taught me how to take down um, bulls. And all of us, you know, we'd have a try. Like when you are feeling that like you're strong enough and you want to prove that you're a, a real man, you try and take down the bull. So I got the experience of taking down bulls. I got the experience of having burst the stomach of a, um, a, a slaughtered cow, you know, too early. I've had the experience of, 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 of spilling the gallbladder into, you know, the parts that we eat and then having the whole entire meat ruined. Um, so those experiences also taught me about how to tame monsters. And, and capitalism is a monster. And they say, wait, be careful when fighting monsters that you don't become one. And that's what capitalism makes you as well. It makes you a monster. If you are not the one that's taming this monster or controlling this monster, it can turn you into a monster. And the explanation that I wanted to give, you know, um, for capitalism um, in that episode that I did on the panel show, right, uh, was more, I guess, intellectual. But if you make it like now, like I'm, I'm making it like with animals and stuff like that, um, or cattle and, and herding, you know, something like that. It, a lot more people will actually be able to relate to it. You know what I mean? Even someone who's listening in the rural areas or whatever will be able to understand, oh, he's talking about like, uh, this capitalism is a bull. If you go to the New York Stock Exchange, you know, there's a bull there. And um, there's a picture on me, uh, when I, of me on, on my Instagram when I went to the New York Stock Exchange and I grabbed that bull by the horns, you know, I was holding it by the horns, like the same way you would take down a bull. And there's bears, you know what I mean? There's a bear market, you know, when things are tough, you know, uh, they call Johan Rupert, uh, Rupert the bear, because he's always performing best when the markets are tough. And when the markets are down, you know, that's when things are looking up for him. And that capitalism monster, right, devours everything. It devours even those that created it, you know, and we, live in a capitalist world. We are subject to it. Everything that we see around us is because of this capitalist world. Um, and we need to be careful that now that we are the ones that have the opportunity to tame this capitalism monster, because we've got political power as black people, that we don't become the same monsters that we've once fought against. So when the Afrikaners from 1948 onwards were the ones that were taming the capitalism monster, they had the reins over it, right? They oppressed us. They oppressed us even though we were a majority because they had the power of the reins of this capitalism bull. When the British and the British colony, you know, had the reins over that bull, they oppressed everybody. They oppressed the Afrikaners, they kept them in concentration camps, you know what I mean? We've seen that when, when um, the Nazis had the reins over their capitalism bull, they oppressed the Jews, you know what I mean? Um, now, in South Africa, the capitalism bull, the reins are still in the hands of the white minority. You can't say Trevor Noah is a colored person because he's actually mixed race. He doesn't identify as a colored person. Colored people don't identify him as one of their own. So this capitalism monster that now certain elite blacks have the reins over allows those elite blacks to become monsters as well. And they can then decide to either become the monsters that oppress or the good monster that fights oppression. And all I was appealing to in the previous episode, you know, um, as an extension of what I said um, in that episode of uh, the panel show that I did on the 12th of January. And, you know, it's, it's so funny that we dropped that episode and it just seems so current and so relevant, like right now. Um, we must not, as Africans and as black people, become oppressors, because we know what oppression can do. We must not now become this capitalism monster because we know what this capitalism monster does. We need to colonize the world with our culture. And our culture is about Ubuntu, humanity. The Ntus don't oppress. 
We don't. We've got everything in abundance. God has blessed us. The people of Ndu. You know, we're the people that's, of God. That's why the whole world is taken from us. You understand? Because we're, we have everything in abundance. So we're we cannot, actually feeding the whole world. With so everything. we cannot have that scarcity mindset. Yeah. You know, that Keynesian mindset. You know, because economics is about the management of scarcity. And we don't have scarcity. We have abundance. So we should not be taking our cues from economists because all they deal with is a falsified scarcities to create scarcity so that we can raise the prices of whatever we're selling so we can make a greater profit because that's what the capitalism monster is about. It's about the profit motive. And that is it. Whether people die, whether we're choking our lungs, whether we're giving people cancer, whether we're giving people diabetes with sugar, you know what I mean? That is the capitalism monster. You know what I mean? They're increasing the sugar tax by less than inflation. And they're saying that we're doing that so that the farmers of sugarcane in KZN don't suffer. But KZN was not a sugarcane farming place until slavery and capitalism was brought there. So now capitalism is protecting itself from taxing itself from the true reason why that soil is so fertile. You know, for the true reason why, you know, flowers grow in KZN, why they've got nice forests and everything else. And now we're subjugating ourselves so that we can feed this capitalism monster so that Ilovo and whoever the companies are, the two companies that sell us uh, Hewlett's, sell us all our sugar so that they can make more money and that people can be less taxed for buying into this poison that is sugar that is being fed to us to make us consume food that is bad for us. You know, that is what sugar is about. Sugar, trans fats, and salt are made so that we can digest food that is bad for us and it makes us feel good. You know, it gives us that dopamine rush. And that is something that, you know, we should be looking at and saying, objectively, is the government doing good to us? Because the sugar tax was supposed to be introduced so that the country spends less on healthcare. How many people do you know suffering from diabetes right now? And how much does that burden our health system? So when you tax the sugar, you're not taxing the sugar to make sure that you raise revenue. The finance minister shouldn't be talking about, oh, no, we, we're raising revenue with these sugar taxes. No, that's not what you should be talking about in parliament. What you should be saying is that we're reducing sugar consumption. And therefore, because we are reducing sugar consumption, we'll have less to spend on our health care and we'll have less um, to contribute to our national health insurance, which they're still promulgating right now. And that will mean that people will be healthier. You know, it will be healthcare instead of dealing with people who are in bad health. Instead of now dealing symptomatically with the capitalism monster and everything that it's fed us for convenience so that we can forget about how we can actually live off of this land. So that we can forget about how everything that we have, you know, here right now is only a minuscule part of what we've been given by the Lord, you know. And um, so that was what that episode encapsulates but someone someone said you know they'll they'll make note a trend for all the controversial stuff and they'll never share these clips so if you watch the controversial one that they were that they were swearing at you for it's got i don't know 150,000 views in four days or whatever and then that um episode that i did with penwell i mean it struggled to get to 40,000 uh, uh views i know it will get more views now that we're speaking about it and people will then um have to cross-reference this conversation with that episode um, because we're bringing light to it. But that just shows you that the content that we're being shown and the content that um, uh, uh, gains traction is the one that will get a reaction, but it's not really the most nourishing. You know, we want to sell all the sugary products. But when we're saying, no, let's drink honey, we don't want to sell that. I will come on to like maybe 10 episodes of this um, a podcast and I'll say, okay, fine. For me, I've taken a decision that I'm not going to drink sugary drinks, right? Except on a cheat day, like occasionally. So the other day I poured myself uh, more fire. No one said, how? No, you're not drinking um, honey or you're not drinking an unsugary drink. No one even noticed that because they're programmed to notice certain things that will maybe seem controversial. They didn't notice that, okay, no, this was my cheat day. I just come out of 96 hours of being um, uh, involuntary, uh, admitted into an asylum. Uh, I come from four hours of being held in um, a prison holding cell, you know, for a, a traffic infraction, you know. So that's 100 hours that I've been trapped. And after that 100 hours, I just wanted, you know, myself an energy drink. I wanted myself some sugar, something that I've 
deprive myself of, you know, to reward myself. That's why I went to Booth. I said, you know what? I've been trapped. I've been cabin fever. Let me go out. And there's nothing wrong with going out occasionally. There's nothing wrong with indulging occasionally. But we do so occasionally because we know what's good for us and what's healthy for us. Now, let's park the capitalism conversation. And thank you for um, touching on it so people can go and refer to that penual conversation. What I wanted to applaud you for on that episode is the apology to Mithali, number mm. one. Mm. And mas- do they call it misogynism? Yeah, misogyny. misogyny. Yeah, misogyny. Yeah. And, and also to equally double up and say, those episodes actually came up on the same day that even on the very episode that a lot of people were criticizing mm. us for, on that episode, you also apologized. Mm. So that's another apology that you you, 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 you did mm. amidst everything that had happened, but mm. you still had to say your truth. Mm. Mm-hmm. But obviously you were humble enough to um, mm. say an apology. Mm. It so happens that on an episode that you had recorded on the 12th of January, you're mm. also humble enough to also give an apology to Michali. Mm. And so it's two apologies on two episodes, but nobody focused on any of those apologies. One dropped at 9 a.m., the other at 12. On the same day. Nobody made clips about that. No one shared anything about that, you know? For me, it's it's important when we are on these platforms, as much as we are not as regulated as um, mainstream is, mm. but I also like the fact that we are humble enough to know when, when, I've, when, when I might have hurt somebody because of something that I might have said earlier, Mm. or because of the train of thought I might have had at that time. I might have said some things that maybe at a later stage I realized, okay, cool. I think that person deserves an apology from Mm. me. Mm. Because of the reaction. And a lot of people are arrogant to not even give an apology. A lot of people always... There's an apology I also gave out, I think it was beginning of last year, about a year ago. And you were criticized for that. I was criticized for giving... Yeah, Penwell um, still doesn't want to accept that apology. That you <laughs> and you made it in front of him. He said, I'm able to do that. I'm able to apologize. And I'm able to understand which, if I, I've hurt people's feelings or I might have said certain things that I feel, you know, rubbed some people the wrong way. Mm. I'm... I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a teachable person, I'm a teachable spirit, mm. and I'm also a student of life because I'm learning this life thing as I grow. Mm. And wherever I'm wrong or wherever I've wronged some people, I'm always able to say, mm. No, that's, a, that's a, a, a good and commendable thing. And I mean, even when I went to the panel show the first time, you know, there were some comments that I felt were unfair that he'd made and I asked him to apologize and he was, uh, you know, willing to offer that apology. So it's not someone who is unwilling to make an apology, you know, where he sees that he may have unintentionally hurt people. Because the po- the point of the apology is that it wasn't my intention to hurt someone. I was trying to bring light to a certain situation, you know, that affects all of us, that affects all of us that love black women, you know, like myself and yourself, you know. And um, the way in which that clip was then contextualized once it went viral, was not the way in which I intended it to be. You know what I mean? So I apologize for that because some people will only see the clip and most people will only see the clip. I mean, there's that clip um, of me talking about Sim Dope that's got over a million views. Or is it? On Twitter. I don't know, I'm not on Twitter. Yeah, I'm just letting you know, it's got over a million on Twitter. You know what I mean? So the episode itself, 150,000, whatever, 100 and whatever thousand um, views, but that small viral clip has got almost 10 times as many views. So the effect of that um, out of context clip can be much more damaging than the intention in the long form. Mm. And I want to make sure that when I get the opportunity to undo the harm, to undo the damage, that I do so. I mean, I did an interview with um, U Benza. Um, Rafael. Uh, yeah, uh, I, bumped into, I bumped into him at the gym this morning. Yeah. Condolences, my brother. Strength. Strength yes. to the team. Strength to your business partners. Magwande, uh, Magukanye, and Nesi uh, Zulbati. I don't know if Agwesanga, Lungesanga, or Agwesanga, Gungesanga, but basically that is do do. Condolences. And yeah. st- strength to you and your family and the team, my brother. So he's also from an uncolonized part of Africa called Liberia, you know? Um, and um, uh, when I spoke to him um, for his magazine, Mosaic. Um, Mosaic, th- yeah. Yeah. Is it's, it Mosaic or Mosaic? Yeah, Mosaic. I think it's, yeah. him. it's, it's, uh, it's him and Sheila Afari, my sister yeah. Sheila. So when, uh, when, when 
when I did that conversation with him, I said, you know, I actually want to undo some of the damage that we've done in terms of promoting alcohol abuse through the music. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, because I feel like, you know, responsible and I've, I'm dedicating myself now to undoing some of that harm. And that was something that we shot sometime in 2019 before the pandemic, you know. Um, when we spoke um, many episodes ago, I, I can't remember which one because we've done um, so many episodes, you know, we spoke about um, uh, uh, what you call you having intentions to have um, AKA as a guest on your show. And I spoke very highly of both him and Casper and also Black Coffee, people who um, I've criticized in the past before. And I wanted people to see that that criticism was limited to that criticism. But as far as the respect that I have for each of these people, or all of them, and the contribution that they've made to South African entertainment, South African music, is something that I respect very highly. You know what I mean? They've opened doors for all of us, many of us, you know what I mean? And that's something that we need to celebrate. But we don't get the opportunity to actually contextualize the effect that we've had on South Africans and in South Africa. And we never get the opportunity to then say, okay, certain things that we've done in the past might have been you know, intended to go in a certain direction, but they ended up being accepted by people in a way in which we did not intend. You know? And when that can do harm, it is up to us. It is our responsibility to correct that. You know what I mean? And I've been trying to correct that, um, especially um, by saying, listen, alcohol abuse is like, you know, it's endemic in our society. And it's something that has been used to suppress the brilliance of our people. You know, if you look at the, the Cape, the Cape, I mean, most of the people in the Cape that are black were paid with wine. The same wine that is celebrated now and said, oh, we've got the best wines in the world, you know, were created by people who will never extract that value. They will never be, you know, winemakers. They will never be owners of vineyards just because their skin color is not pale white, you know? And the people that did that damage to that community, they need to undo that damage. We cannot now just hate them and distance ourselves from them, you know, and say, oh, you did this damage, now we're moving in a different direction. No, we need to bring them in. We need to say, listen, this is what has happened to our ancestors. This was, was done by your forefathers. This was, was done to our forefathers. This was, was done to our mothers, you know what I mean? And we need to undo that so that going forward, our children can inherit the repair that we've done. You know, instead of inheriting the damage that we've done, and we cannot be passing on curses, amapati, into the future. And that's something that is very un-African, that the fact that we pass on amapati, we don't resolve our issues. Because in African culture, we resolve our issues. We have an entire ceremony, a, a beast must be slaughtered, blood must be spilled. You know, there must be something done to acknowledge that either wrong has happened, right, or something good has happened. We need to uh, accept the blessings, you know, in a way in which that, sh that shows that we are grateful. We need to show our, we express our gratitude as Africans. And we cannot lose our culture just because we're trying to tame this capitalism monster. You know, it cannot turn us into the things that we're becoming because we are so in love with um, money and the convenience that it buys us away from our, our, our purpose that we feel like, you know, we're living full lives just because we've got certain riches or just because people look at us with envy. That is the economy that is being sold right now. If you look at Instagram, all that they're selling is envy. If you look at um, all the social media platforms, it's about, oh, I've got this. Do you have it? Okay, how many people have this? Oh, oh me too. I've also got this. Oh, I don't have this. So I don't need to have Instagram because I don't have the latest iPhone. So my pictures don't look as great as everybody else's. So, you know, I don't get as many likes. And that is the capitalism monster. And we're seeing it and we're not taming it. We're not sharing the type of content that builds, that nourishes our souls, that actually shows that we've got more to offer the world than just our labor, you know, that is um, a shoulder to this wheel of this capitalism monster that grinds away at our humanity. Um, so I think our main purpose is to bring back Ubuntu. That is it. As a nation, that should be what we are striving to bring to the world. The Americans brought the American dream we should be bringing Ubuntu to the world. Thank you very much for touching on Ubuntu, um, Nota, because okay. 
I've, you know, I've always practiced my purpose. I mm. always say to people, I'm blessed to become a blessing. And that's all I've ever done. I've only ever helped people. I'm running away to take a leak. Well, no, you go right ahead. I've, I've only ever helped people throughout my career. The little blessings that I would get, I would share with some people. I'll pull some people on. And even on a, a person like Nota, some people will criticize me for having me for having him on. Number one, he's not cloud chasing because he's got cloud. On every episode that he's been on this podcast, you'd see it's a, the numbers are very high or any other podcast that he goes to, the numbers are high. So he's got clout. So he wouldn't be on my podcast for clout, number one. Number two, I wouldn't be bringing Nota for clout. <laughs> I mean, South Africans know I'm DJ Swoo. <laughs> I don't have to chase cloud. Cloud follows me wherever I go. And even this platform is, is growing at an, at an astronomical rate. We've got cloud. We don't need to bring anybody for cloud. And if you can go back and check out what our, our podcast is about and what it's for, it's for educational purposes. We touch on African spirituality, art, creativity, entertainment, entrepreneurship, business, how to make money online, et cetera, et cetera. We could have easily done a, a platform for clout that talks about all the latest trending topics so we can have big numbers on every episode. I guarantee you this podcast would already be on a million subscribers, but that is not me. That is not me. I'm about following my name, so I'm blessed to become a blessing. Even my platform is about, initially, it was 100% around personal development. It, it, it still is 100% around personal development, but initially, it was around focus on entrepreneurship. But then I started understanding that South Africa is such a diverse and such a big country, and we're living in a global world that you can't only focus on a, a niche of entrepreneurs when you've got so many great South Africans. And that's the reason why we even started opening it up to be like, there's a lot of great people out there and there's a lot to learn from, from everybody. So this is actually a personal development platform. But anyway, coming back to um, what I wanted to say to Nota is, over the years, the amount of work that one has done has been around motivating kids at schools, putting people on, writing books, inspiring people, helping people wherever I can, using my own money to pay for bursaries, to get kids to school, getting government to fund kids, and all of that amazing work that one has done over the years. Mm. And then we started a company called Mofire for the reasons of having been knocking for so many years to be looked at as a glorified beggar, where you're always trying to get funding for students. Every time when you're knocking to try and get some help from government or from some successful business people to go help out students, I was getting sick and tired of always asking and asking and asking. And when Sipiwe Lukuleni Shongwe came with the idea of us starting our own first black-owned energy drink in the world, I was excited because it was aligned with the type of work that I was in. I'm a DJ. I travel all over. Both of you have SL in your names. Energy, yeah. Both of us. <laughs> you know, it's pure. You know, it's pure. It's a gift. Anyway. It's, it's, so Ian. it's a blessing. I'm blessed to become a blessing. So, gift and a blessing. Yeah, it's a more gift fire. and a blessing, right? More fire. And that's more fire. For me, I saw it as an opportunity to use... Not that I don't know what Spususo is, but some people don't know. Yeah, I was and, and I understand because yeah. we've got a global audience. To use this business that we're starting to say for every can of this more fire drink, that we sell, mm. a portion of the proceeds that come mm. from here will benefit students, will mm. take kids to school. And those are some mm. of the things that obviously now we don't communicate as loud as we used to when the brand started. Mm. But it was started basically on the basis of promoting entrepreneurship in the country, promoting a culture of people using it as a tool to go hustle. Somebody who just wants to put a bread on the table for their family, just a hundred rand or just 500 rand. Not, mm. not somebody who wants to even, you know, become a millionaire. Somebody who just wants to start from A to B. Mm. Just put bread on the table right now. And that's what it was about. And another reason was, me and CPO called it a protest project, was for those main reasons. But then let me tell you, over the years, business sucked me in so now we're going back to the mm. capitalism monster, the mm. capitalist monster, right? Mm. It sucked me in so much so that as much as I was preaching the language of entrepreneurship, mm. um, getting young people to own things, creating things for themselves, creating their own brands, was a good narrative to preach, which mm. we still preach. And we can see the country is, 
is, is developing and it's changing. And, you know, we amplified that conversation mm. through a company we started called, we started then in 2013, it's 10 years ago, called um, Leadership 2020. Mm. You know, getting the likes of Abu Richard Branson into the country, getting Abu Tony Gaskins, Abu Les Brown, and all these amazing people and partnering with other people to amplify the noise around um, promoting entrepreneurship in the country in South mm. Africa. But little, did, little was I aware that over the years, I'm getting sucked into becoming so much of an entrepreneur and so much into focusing on money and business that I'd forgotten my true purpose. Mm. And my true purpose was the Sibusiso Leope Education Foundation. Mm. That's the job and that's the purpose that I was brought on earth to do. Mm. And I'm going back to the alcohol conversation also, I'm linking it in. Some people always ask me like, what happened to your vodka guys? Mm. What happened to Local Flame? At mm. some point you guys were doing your own vodka. Mm. One had to have a... Um, they call it what introspection mm. where you look at yourself in the mirror mm. you perform a sort analysis on yourself mm. what am i here for your am i still in line with your weaknesses thank the you. opportunities thank the you threats thank you what am i here for on earth am i still in line am i still aligned with my values my principles what i'm here to do and i'd also get some some criticism when when we used to um you know promote the vodka and and sell the local flame vodka mm. but something happened to remind me to say, go back to your true value and why you are here on earth, which is you were born for a purpose. And now this answers the, the question of a lot of you guys who are asking me, what happened to Local Flame? So I had to um, decide, am I going to do non-alcoholic drinks and alcoholic drinks? Am I going to do both or am I just going to do non-alcoholic drinks? Now, judging, for, uh, judging from what I represent and what I come from and what I've represented over the years and what I stand for, I kind of decided, you know what, um, alcoholic drinks are not in line with what I represent and with who I am. Mm. And that's the reason a lot of you guys right now, you never hear a lot of, a lot of um, local flame conversation from me. Maybe in the future, you might hear it from other people, other influencers or whatever. But for me, I just decided to focus on the non-alcoholic drinks because I kind of... Decided to become Uncle Vinny. <laughs> Is it? Mm. I need to, he, he says he's too young to promote alcohol. Oh, big up to him. Fans. Big up to him. I mean, his fans are kids. I'm proud of him. I'm yeah. proud of him for that. He says, I no, Uncle Nota, me, you see me, I do the juices and only the kids stuff, you know, because my fans are kids. I can't be promoting. And big up to Vinny. We've been speaking um, to get him onto the platform. I'm so mm. proud of how he's... Uh, Turned his career a success. And mm. we're recording this episode on the exact day that our brother Makado Ricky Rick passed on exactly a year ago. Mm. May his soul rest in peace. And thank you. And happy birthday to Azanian Doll. Is, is, is it Azanian Doll's birthday today? Today, yeah. Okay, happy birthday. You know what I mean? We celebrate life. And also my favorite South African vocalist, Zoe Mudicha. Oh, Zoe Mudicha's birthday today? I love Zoe Mudicha. We all love Zoe Mudicha. I'm a big fan. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so, the yeah. first time I met her, I was interviewing at Massive Metro. She cried. Uh -huh. She cried tears, like literally cried mm -hmm. tears. And she um, told me of how I've impacted her life growing up and how she's watched my career. And meeting me was um, one of those highlights of her career. And I was so humbled. And I'll never forget that day. And mm. for that, my sister, I'll forever love you. Happy birthday to you. I love you very much. Yeah. So, so she's Mudia. celebrating her birthday. People must listen to her album, Inga Neguan. Inga Neguan. Because that will teach you about self-love and loving your blackness. Uh, it, it continues what you were saying. I mean, that yeah. is a soundtrack to what you were just speaking on. So please, let me not interrupt you. Uh, no, 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 it's okay. I'm, I'm about to finish because I was obviously waiting for you. But shout out to Uncle Vinny. Looking forward to having you here. But for me, the conversation goes back to Ubuntu. Mm. On virtual Mkuku last week, Peño pleaded. He pled to Izinkab and he said, we know Utubunzima out there. What about we are an African nation. We are, in, we are a nation that is brought upon values of Ubuntu. You know, and Ubuntu, what would you call it in English? Humanity? Yeah, humanity. It and, is. And, and for me, I'm going back 100% more into what I've always represented. And I'm sort of... Alex Harris I'm, I'm sort of about it. But, but in, I'm refusing to be sucked in by this capital, capitalism monster. I'm going back to my true purpose, which is being born for purpose and being for purpose. I 
Africa versus the States. Is, oh, this is a play at the State Theatre by Mbongeni Moroke. Yes. When is this? Um, I think it's it's in March. Okay. Um, people must just check, just look for, just search Africa versus uh, the state at the Joburg Theatre. Nice. What you're talking about is in this play. The plea that U Penwell made is inside this play. I was with this brother today um, at the, the national broadcaster. Labak <laughs> Toshekun. <laughs> but you know, but I mean, I don't have, um, I don't have any grudges. I don't oh, have yeah, any grudges. Okay, so I walk into the SABC. Oh, that's the SABC. Whenever, whenever I want to, I walk into FM whenever I want to. Okay. I walk into Cozy FM, Metro FM, whenever I want okay, to. Okay, so there's no, I, I, don't hold no any, I don't hold any grudges, yeah. Okay, it's not because now you're on YouTube, so you have a zonda. No, thanks, I don't mean it. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Um, Actually, you're a bonga. So, I met Imbongi, um, called Maibui Africa. Um, and um, he gave, you know, a praise speech about humanity. And we we're speaking about gun violence. And we we're speaking about, you know, how this logo keeps youngster CPT safe from gun violence in the Cape. Um, how soccer kept Benny McCarthy safe from gun violence. And um, we lost, obviously, our brother. And it's something that, you know, we are still going to take time to come to terms with. I mean, his album is released at midnight tonight. It came, it came out on Friday last week. Yeah. This past Friday. Yeah. Okay, this episode is coming out on a Monday. It came out on Friday. Go stream it. Go check it out. So, Mass Country. You know, or Mass Country. Mass Country. <laughs> yes. That's the name. And it says it's for the masters of the country. It's Mass Country. Yeah. So you need to say it. Yes, Zulu. You know. Um, and um, when I was with um, my brother. In um, Mbongi, you know, he had a beautiful uh, praise uh, speech that he gave, you know. Um, so people must watch that show, Expressions. It's on uh, the SABC News channel. So basically, it's a court case. They're in court, and Africa and Ubuntu humanity versus the state. So it's a state versus Ubuntu. And we're seeing that playing out and how it's turning us into monsters. This capitalism monster means that you, know, you can take a gun for money, and you can use it to take someone's life and do irreversible damage. You know, so um, as you were saying that, um, and as you were speaking to that, I was like, what art or what culture actually speaks to this? You know, and the state theatre hosts many plays. You know, um, Zoe Mudika is one of the many artists that speak to our humanity. And we need more of that content. We need that to have more clout. We need that to be what people term as cloud chasing. When someone speaks about humanity and Ubuntu, people should call them a cloud chaser so that that can trend, you know, so that we can see our essence, you know. Uh, the reflection that we look at in the mirror shouldn't be that of what we've become, but that of which we aspire to be, you know. And um, I think um, after that conversation that we had, um, I then remembered um, uh, the conversation that we had on that expression show on SABC, I then remembered that I wrote an open letter <laughs> as Quest <laughs> before. <laughs> I, the first open letter I wrote as Quest <laughs> was about gun violence. And it was the time where uh, um, Prince Costinho was with AKA at Urban Brew and he brandished a gun. You know, and then Casper said, oh, these guys brandished a gun, so I, I'm not performing on live amp today. Do you remember that controversy? And then after I, that, I don't know what happened, but I remember. After that at Urban Brew, I remember. you would know because um, I your worked at Urban Brew for many there, years. Yeah. And your studios moved there. But yeah. that's when they introduced the gates. After that gun incident, they introduced the gates and the security. You know, everything changed after that. You needed to have access, the security sign in, you know. And I wrote that open letter to say, we cannot be encouraging gun-toting. It's not a game. 
you know. And I was very angry at um, Kiernan at that point in time for allowing Prince to do that, you know, not in our name. You know, and it was everywhere. That open letter went on to V Entertainment. It was still a, a TV show that was on Vuzu. Vuzu was still a channel that existed back then. You know, and people can go back and watch it because it's online. It's on YouTube. If you go and 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 check that um whole entire thing, and I was saying, I said stakeholders, but I said stake meets not stakeholders. As a stakeholders within this entertainment and culture industry, we need to be setting better examples, the best examples. And it just is very sad that it is gun violence that ended up taking, you know, the greatest South African hip hop um, act that we've ever had. You know, um, it is even more hurtful that children had to watch their hero being gunned down like that. You know, the amount of mothers that are crying, you know what I mean? Like in this country right now, because they've lost their sons, they've lost their breadwinners, they've lost their hope for their family lineage to continue into the future, you know? And I mean, it, it goes beyond pleading Nizengabi. Because for me, we know that there's more than Izengabi that are out there. People say, oh no, they go to Dleblin's hostel and then they get Izengabi. I mean, the Dleblin's um, uh, massacres were sentenced last week. And um, I mean, when I saw the story of them being sentenced, I was like, that is completely inconsequential because that means that now they can really become Izengabi. Because I think there's a misconception of what Izengabi are. Izengabi are not people who are living in the hostel. No, they're people that are killers that have been convicted for crimes that will never, ever get out of jail. Assassins, that, right? Well, assassins. Assassins, yes. Yeah. They're sitting in prison right now. And what happens is that our correctional officers get paid to release these people so they can commit these crimes, and then they capture them. They recapture them, they go back. Are you serious? Yes. That's why you, cannot, you, you can't track them down. Oh, so these are already... They already convicted, convicted criminals that get let out by they the police. They get let out to go perform the act, and then they get brought Are back in. Are you serious? Oh my goodness, I was not aware. That is exactly how they get away with it. So now you're looking for someone who you think is on the loose. No, that person is in prison. And now when you think, okay, when was this person imprisoned? Oh, they were imprisoned on such and such a date. Oh, the crime happened two years after. So no, this person was in prison. There's no. Yes, this person was let out of prison, so they can go and commit these acts, and then they were brought back in. Chu, chu, chu. I was not aware of that. So appealing to Izengabi does not help. We need to appeal to the people in our prisons. I was contacted last week by prisoners who are doing, uh, serving the last six months of their tenure bid. Um, and they watched the Penwell show. <laughs> they didn't watch the, the controversial episode. They watched the, the uncontroversial episode because they're in prison. They want things that will uplift them. And they said, you spoke about how we can redeem ourselves and how we can contribute um, positively even after we leave here and how we can have opportunities um, that will prevent us from going back into a life of crime. They said, but nota, okay, we know that you're a law-abiding citizen, ne? it's fine. Please ignore the fact that we are calling you on a cell phone from brand. Don't ask us how we got the cell phone. <laughs> but we've built a studio. All of our feet. They're at Cullinan right now, um, um, Kidex's hometown that the Cullinan prison right now. They say, we've built a studio and we've been recording and we'd like your guidance. We're leaving. We will be released in September. So that's in six months from now, you know, or just over six months from now. We'll be released in September and we want that by the time we're released, we at least can work on our music careers and we won't go back into what got us here because we believe in the message that you've been sharing. So the devices are now inside the prisons. The devices are with our brothers who think that they have they are irredeemable and i'm appealing to our brothers behind bars to say it does not matter what you've done it does not matter how irreversible it is it doesn't matter even if you've taken lives even if you've taken a life your soul your soul can still be redeemed your soul can still be retrieved from the darkness and that darkness that you feel that has become you is not you we are people of the light you know, our our um, our our Khrutman uh, Donlaga has written a book about ancient Kemet. Yes, that's what an incredible book, guys. Go check out an episode that we had with him on the Hustlers Corner. I interviewed him. I think it was a few months ago here on the Hustlers Corner. A few, maybe it's twenty episodes ago. Go check it out. 
Dr. Don Laka on the Hustlers Corner. He speaks about the book, Dope and Book. And I'd like that book to be shared in all the prisons, <laughs> along with the Bible, so that people can actually, and our people can actually see that, you know, when you have come out of that cage that you're in and you're kept in, you know what I mean? You can still come out to be a beautiful bird that can fly and flap its wings. You know, you're not just trapped in that situation and that's your destiny. No, 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 no. That's not what you deserve. I mean, when I was held for four hours in that cell, uh, I was held with many other um, um, inmates who had even slept the night before. And as soon as I got in, I said, gentlemen, I'm not going to be here for long. Please leave your mattresses and everything. You can stay on your mattresses. I'm not going to be here for long. Even the food, my food, you can eat it. They took, I ordered two plates of food. You know, I gave them up. I said, I'm going to be out of here. But in the time that I'm out of here, I need to give you guys hope. And I preached for maybe two hours straight. Two hours straight to teach my brothers that, listen, you are the redeemable. You do not deserve to be here. You do not deserve to be here. You do not belong here. This is not your destiny. You're not jailbirds. You need to see more for yourselves internally. And you need to start believing that there's more for you out there. And therefore, you can get yourself out of this trap and out of this system. And I think if we reprogram the minds of our people and teach them humanity in that way through our worst examples, through the ones who have fallen by the wayside, through the ones who have shown a lack of humanity, through the ones who have taken life, who have blood on their hands, if we can show that we can wash the blood off of their hands and redeem them, then we'll have less people falling into that darkness. Because we'll have people who are standing in the light and saying, listen, out of all the darkness that has drenched my soul, of all the goodness, I still found that humanity, that seed of humanity, I still put it in that soil inside me. I still watered that. And out of that, a tree of life grew. A tree of rebirth grew. And we can all be reborn. You know what I mean? We can all um, be hugging our rebirth and pass that on as fruits. And I think that this type of content that we're sharing right now, a lot of people get it wrong or get it twisted. You know, this is the purpose that we share this content, uh, content for. And also, when we debate certain issues, when we disagree, we also show people that, you know, you can disagree without having to demonize one another. And we can have progressive conversations where we chisel at each other's imperfections until we become, you know, those perfectly round pebbles, you know. Um, and these pebbles that, um, or, or, or these pebbles, or these pearls that we are sharing here, you know, need to be treasures that people can then wear around their necks, wear on their ears, wear with pride everywhere that they go, so that it doesn't burden us so much that we're trying so hard to you know, change this world, right? But we feel like the world is against change itself, you know? Um, because there's still so much hope. There's still so much hope to be shared, and that is our purpose. And I'm glad that, you know, um, you have also refound your purpose and you've also shared that, you know, amongst everything that you, you have done and everything that you've achieved within that light, even you had found that you've lost your way and even you were able to recollect what it is that you, you started this journey for and then bring yourself more towards the person that you want to be other than the person that you are becoming because of the situation or the circumstances that you find yourself in. I love you very much, my brother. Before Thank you we very wrap much. it up, I'd love to bring um, one of the guys from here in Waku in Rosebank to come and sell the place. Come and speak about the place. Guys, if you've got a spot, you'd like to invite us to come there. We are here. We can come shoot an episode at your university, at your tertiary institution, at your high school. Invite us. We'd love to Even come and prisons. hang out with you guys. Even at the prisons on Chile Round. Yeah. Come and promote the business. And for it was Chile, talk about the business as well. Maybe you can pull a chair, sit a little bit, speak for like two, two three minutes. And just, um, yeah, come closer, come closer, my brother. Yeah, there's the microphone. Sure. Hello, guys. My name is Adrian, and I'm a waiter in... Uh, come closer to the mic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here is Waku. So Waku is the Asian fusion restaurant, right? And we're open on from Tuesday from 8 to 5, then from Wednesday 
we open from nine till half nine. Then on weekends, we open uh, from, on Saturdays, we open from nine till 10 o'clock. Uh, come and celebrate with us. We've got nice meals. Uh, actually, it's a halal shop, 100% halal. So if ever you feel like coming and having a chill with the people here, come and join us. This is a place to be, very quiet, but the food is worth it. So I can att <laughs> I, I can attest to that. I had your brother. What what made you yeah. what made you become a restaurateur? What, how did you get into this business? Uh, actually, hospitality industry you get to interact with many people, so you meet a lot of people. My vision was to have something like this as well. So I'm also working on having my own thing like this. So that's why I'm getting the experience like to go up there and have my, like, something like that. No, that's nice. So, so you're teaching yourself excellence in service currently? Definitely. You, you're, you're currently mastering that? I'm currently getting some experience, mm -hmm. actually, to at least one day to be a business owner, actually. Nice. You see? To find to, to 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 inspire and motivate motivate young people like do you know what guys I started here and now I'm here you see because a lot of uh, young people out there are getting lost some are saying no it can't be a waiter some are saying it can't work in a rent but you start from somewhere actually then you get to be something else at the end of the day very proud of you my brother your social media is waku underscore za eh? definitely and maybe you can also share your social media platforms for those who might want to get in touch with you because oh. some of our sisters here they might end up saying hey this man looks good his <laughs> melanin is popping and his skin looks smooth oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so on uh, instagram it's a d a w d i e e double d i e a double or a yes okay a w d i e underscore p r i p h i r p h i r i or a d but with an a at the beginning and yes. then underscore p r i yes nice then on Facebook it's Adrian p r i yeah or Adrian p r i on Facebook ne? yeah so yes Facebook and on Twitter same thing Adrian p r i one word uh, Twitter one word. Yeah, just one word. Congratulations, my brother. And thank, thank you, you brother, for so. thank you for Same hosting us today. Same to you. Uh, hopefully, people will come and enjoy and have a chill. Like we really enjoyed your company here today. We'll thank definitely, so we'll definitely come through. Oh, Can I ask for one more thing? Yes. Another double espresso. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, brother. Bring it to you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm headed down to a listening session. Oh, okay, no. Yeah, so I, I need to be I need to, I need to be awake. Okay. Yeah, so I'm having an untropic. I'm, I'm heading to Elo Zars listening session. Nice. I know that um, uh, you are probably heading to the um, Maskandi, Mask Country listening session. Listening session. Yeah. You know, um, by the time this episode plays, people would have had their reviews on it, would have listened to it. You know, um, I mean, I've been bumping company the whole the whole week. Me too. I will lie. Yeah. But we all know, I mean, if there's anybody in South Africa who knows how to make radio dominating bangers, if there's anybody who knows how to make a hit, that's AKA. And he's back at number one on the radio charts, debuted. Of course. The last time he debuted at number one was with Free. Yeah. And that was the last time he'd been at number one. Um, um, Free, which also features Uriki Riki Bachefield, boy, uh, DJ Tira. Yeah. Um, and for him to come back onto the charts, uh, nobody gonna shake my confidence. I look you straight up and down. When the DJ says, I yep, yep, is he gonna play my pia? Said the puppets are dancing, quamash, champas in land. Oh man, I'm sorry. You understand? Man. Sorry, once again. So, um, uh, you know, I think. Um, he, the charts, like he's in the top 100 over 10 times, you know, uh, with all the tributes and all the dedications, people listening to all his radio bangers. And I'm just glad that on this platform, you know, and on many platforms, I mean, I've been on podcast and chill with Mac G and um, people used to say, oh, no, KO killed him on Ran Josie until I explained what his Ran Josie verse actually means, you know, and flipped the script on that. And then people actually started to look into his lyrics and say, actually, this guy is what not rapping about... 
Yo. So people have, have to go check out the that episode. Go to podcast, podcast and chill. Right. Yeah, episode right. 209. That's where I was a guest. Um, episode 209. Um, and um, yeah, I broke it down um, for people there. And even on episodes here, we've given him his flowers. You yeah. know, I'm just yeah. I'm just glad that we gave him his flowers while he was still alive. That's what he wanted on the song Energy, which is also um, a, a platinum record now. Um, produced by Umaqua, same as Free, which was pr- his last number one on the radio charts, which was produced by Umaqua as well. Um, you know, uh, he said that he wants his flowers while he was alive, and a lot of us were able to give them to him, you know, as the legacy. And um, now with his passing, and the fact that we're, we're, we're still coming to terms with it, you know, I feel like um, for me personally, um, this Tuesday, when the sun came out, you know, I took my car to the car wash, number one. I woke up in the morning, the sun is out. I was feeling great. Everyone I spoke to on the phone was like, oh my goodness, you sound so different. You, you sound, you know, and I think that I had an opportunity to grieve and express all of my feelings, you know. And I feel like a lot of people who suppress their feelings rob themselves of an opportunity to actually get past some of the difficult things to accept, you know? So I've had my opportunity to to grieve out loud, you know? I've had my opportunity um, um, to express my feelings. And um, now I feel so much better. I feel like a weight has been lifted off my chest. I feel like, you know, I can lay my brother to rest without, you know, being angry at the world that he was taken prematurely, you know? At the young age of 35, it's just so sad that, you know, he passes, 14 days after he turns 35, Ricky also was 35 when he passed. He passed Ricky passed today exactly a year ago. You know what I mean? And um, while we're shooting this episode guys, on the 23rd, on the, on the 23rd yeah. yeah. So, you know, and uh, Mas Kandi comes out on the 24th as That's well. That's tomorrow. It's coming out tomorrow. You know, um, well, it's coming out tomorrow. When you guys watch this episode, it yeah. came out a couple of days ago, <laughs> you know, um, and um, people will. Um, have a chance to really uh, come to terms with the loss um, through listening to the music because that is the one thing that we've seen that he loved more than anything else. You know what I mean? Um, Even though Cairo doesn't want to play instruments, (laughs) um, uh, her father has been instrumental in all of our lives and we will continue to honor him so that when she grows up and she gets social media one day, she can then see the love that her father brought to all of us because, you know, um, music is a thing of love. It's a gift. And another thing that, um, you know, um, this whole entire episode has also taught me, it's also from you. I told myself, oh, no, I'm not going to go out anymore. Um, I'm not going to be out there. You were talking about, oh, no, you, you want to be away from the alcohol itself. Yes, I don't drink alcohol, but that doesn't mean I can't go to the club. Yeah. You yeah. know? So yeah. now I'm going to be taking hostings, yeah. you know, going out there, yeah. making sure that, you know, we're able to celebrate with people. We're able to bring ourselves to people. Guy, guys, ho- Nota does not host Mahala. They must pay you, bro. No, no, no. They're, go- yeah. they're going to pay Get me. in touch with Nota. So I've got my, my Hubbly pipe. <laughs> yeah, <we're- laughs> so that we don't share germs. I've got mine. It stays yeah. in my bag so that as soon as I see the Hubbly is fucked, I just add my pipe there. You know, I recommend that you guys also get yourselves your own personal pipe that you clean and make sure that it's hygienic. You know what I mean? I'll be drinking my water and I'll be sharing the experiences everywhere. I think that we need to bring our gospel everywhere. Yeah, you know, there shouldn't to. be environments where we cannot touch because there's not an environment where God does not go, you know? And um, so let us be led by God. Let us um, continue to do that. And um, And justice must take its course. They have to solve this case. Yeah, they have to solve this case. So we need to keep it alive. We need to make sure that the hurt that we feel is also something that makes them act more urgently. You know, Um, I think for me, the album of the year, right, in this season, because the summer's cutoff date is 28 February now. And by the 28 February is tomorrow if you're watching this uh, right now. That's also the anniversary of um, uh, the release of uh, my wife's first summer award-winning album, which I produced myself. So that's the, the anniversary of the release of my last summer award-winning um, um, album as an executive producer. And I'd retired after that. I told myself, ah, oh, no, I'm done. Uh, but I'm back at it. I've been back in studio. I've been working. 
you know, um, I because I saw a smoother DJing in New York, and I was like, <laughs> you know what, <laughs> this thing of retirement, <laughs> I was smoother. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, I, I'm going to be enjoying uh, the rest of my youth as well. You know, I'm turning um, 33 on the 20th of March. Yo, 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 yo. We have to throw, we have to throw Nota a party, guys. You know? Actually, Nota has to pull what we DJs do when we do like a, a birthday tour the whole country. And all you club owners, you have to pay him because he's going to bring in numbers but into I'm, your clubs. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in Texas. I'm going to be at oh, South by Southwest. Overseas? I'm going to be at South oh, by Southwest. Oh, SWSX, so. sure. Mm, so, I don't know. Maybe you can join me that side. Maybe you can throw a party that side. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to be in New York. Um, on the 30th of March for the, Wale. The, there's also Miami Music Conference. You know, happening. that's in March, so I'm I'm going to be traveling. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able and to shoot some content. And then immediately after that, there's Coachella. Yo. But before that, there's Easter. Is so that before Easter or after Easter? Easter weekend is this the year. first weekend in April. Oh, okay. Yeah, so before that, there's Easter. We're doing um, a tombstone unveiling, Ekaya, for my uncle. So I'll be back home for that. And then immediately... Um, after that, I'm um, staying for another three weeks for therapy. I booked my therapy already, my therapy sessions um, with my um, uh, psychologist as well uh, to process some of the grief. Because every time I have pr grief to process, I always go into therapy, process the grief, you know, get the tools, the coping mechanisms, because we need to make sure that we are nourishing ourselves, we're nourishing our our minds as well, and we are presenting ourselves whole to the world. You know, we're not presenting ourselves, yet we're putting on makeup to cover up the cracks and we're not fixing our issues. So um, that's what I've got planned. And um, I was just so excited when I saw last week, um, I don't know if you saw it, Focalistics um, performance. Yeah, at the, at the Grammy. recording, our RIAA. Yeah, yeah, the Recording Academy, Award. the Grammys, the people that do the Grammys, recording right? Recording Industry Academy Awards, something like that. Yeah, yeah. something, something, something to do with the Grammys. Global Spin, that's what something, they call yeah, it. Yeah, Global Spin, so he they identified. It's Jepa, ne? It's Jepa. Yeah. yeah, that's the song that I was uh, I was trying to rap along to when I did the El Tiro podcast. Yeah. And I just can't get the lyrics. But if you listen to his album, Ghetto Gospel. Ghetto Gospel is what um, Skanda Republic is to Kwaido, you know, and what Avery is to African Trap. Ghetto Gospel is to Amapiano. It's the epitome of rap and Amapiano put together. And if you listen to the tapestry and the stories that he interweaves, you know, it describes what life has become and what life is becoming or progressing into if we don't, you know, grab the bull by the horns and rein it in. So other than that album itself, you know, um, Ghetto Gospel, I didn't think that, you know, there's an opportunity for someone to top that album. But I think that um, this Maskandi album Mas might country, be country, Mass Country. No, no, I'm calling it Maskandi. Maskandi, sure. Yeah, yeah I'm calling it Maskandi. <laughs> Everybody else will be calling it Maskandi, yeah. All the Nkabis will be calling it uh, Maskandi. Um, so, and the good Nkabis, the Javas of this world. So... And the big Zulus yeah. and all of the likes, um, the Skindi, Indi, um, and oh, Gonjo, Gonjo, is it King Nuba, Lord Script, Abu King Nuba, yeah, is in Jazako, yeah, you understand? All hey, those King guys. Nuba, ngachi abu kusala na ugle podcast. Yeah. Now in Nizom Kroon, Nizom Kroon, um, forward your thing ugle podcast. Yeah, have you forward. seen um, Skindi and Java song? It takes in. No, I haven't. Yeah, you, you guys, check that song out. It takes in. Um, so congratulations to Java for a brilliant album. As I've well. given myself some time to listen to Java's yeah. new album. Congratulations and for you to say bonga la ngacha bula fut na uzo khalala. As guys yeah. khalala in a long time. The last time we did was on the radio. So Java, you've never been to the Hustlers Corner. Nya ngacha bula for you to khalala na we pants. So I and mean, vocalistic as well. Ngacha bula. Ngathaba, ngathaba boso ya strata. Tabela. Bona pitori ngathaba blind. Happy. So I think that Maskandi is going to raise the bar again, you know, just like he did with Levels. You know, I remember listening to Levels for the first time um, at uh, South Beach in Durban, myself and Cuesta, immediately as the song, as the album was released at midnight. We waited in the car outside. We didn't go into our hotel room. We waited outside like scene to listen to which he, what standard has he set now where where what must be beat you know how do we take it higher than this you know what I mean and um, I remember when we played all eyes on me the first time like yo hi then 
It's Pindi Levier, you know. Before we go, I also just need to give out the um, the track list of the album. Seeing that we are recording this episode before the album comes out, it's coming out tomorrow. Um, Mbuzi, Freestyle. Featuring? Tato Soul. Shout out to Tato Soul from um, Etridgeville. Last Time, Lemons and Lemonade featuring Nasty C. And I watched Nasty C performing at Altitude Lounge and he had to perform this verse a couple of times a cappella. The entire club went crazy. When Risma Jessa performed earlier, you know, I could see that, yes, ov obviously Reese has got the Ama Piano hits, but when Nasty got onto stage, everybody went down to the pit at altitude. The phones were out. Gemini Major as well, you know, was dancing around in the background, you know, so shout out. That song has really resonated with people and shout out to Izai Zai Lit. Obviously, company Nasty. featuring Key Dominant, KDDO. Congratulations, Key Dominant dope, dope is, you know, dominant on the Billboard chart. You know, he's out there um, under the influence with Chris Brown. You know, for him to lend a hand again after uh, Fela and Versace, Versace and to lend um, another hand again on another track that's also on um, uh, this album called Everest. I mean amazing productions i think he's one of um our best producers in africa right now dangerous featuring blackie and nadia nakai so blackie that's feature number one on the album why is blackie featured more than once where else is he featured everest <laughs> army which is a bonus track diary yeah. anxiety ease featuring blackie and younger chief you understand i'm a piano featuring um uh, zoom in. Zoom in. I'm a piano who's it featuring? It. It's featuring Leilizi from um, Mozambique and um, Weathered. Leilizi and Willard, congratulations, guys. Weathered, Weathered. Is it Weathered? Yeah, Weathered. I'm a spec so I'm a Spono, no? Featuring Java. Yes. Featuring O3 and Chopper. And featuring Sun, S O N. Yes, son, then, baby son. He's now son. He's grown up. Yeah, and obviously yes. Crown featuring MT and Manana. And who are the writers and The album is there? executive produced by Kiernan, a.k.a. Forbes. May so rest in peace. Nkantla mm. Nivo Ndimande. Life of Nivo. Tiamo Litsweni. And Art by Kiernan. Yeah. Nkantla um, Nivo Ndimande and Zerok as well. Ndimande, yeah. Yeah, producers, a.k.a. Produced by him, produced by Zerok, Krista. F. Jesus. Christa. Christa, right? Yeah. Um, he, was or, also instrumental, he was also instrumental in Amanda Black's um, debut album, Amazulu Christa. Okay. O3 mm. and Chopper, yeah. Dominant, um, Safer, um, Nelkno, mm. Tepo, Teddy Muloi, oh. and Loud Hailer. And Tepo. Um, the, uh, that's um, uh, Teddy, the guitarist. Yes. I also need to make a correction. Last week, yo, yo, yo. I misnamed someone. His yeah. engineer is Tepo, not Tabi. I about Baba Pai about correct. A little knife flew over my head. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. His name is, uh, is Tepo, but he knows what I meant. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's Tepo. It's just that, you know, I was thinking at the at a rate of knots I'd been trapped up for, so it's a slip of the tongue. And the first time I met him, I missaved his number as Tabi, so, mm. which I then corrected afterwards. So when I was remembering him, I remembered it as a, how I'd missaved it. You know, I was just trying to recollect as many memories as I could because we were trying to pay tribute to our homie. Yeah. And we we're trying to encapsulate the essence of who he was and the effect that he's had on so many other people. And one thing I'd like to um, also say right now that people have not noticed is that AKA was an economy. What you're reading there is an economy. All of those people have got families. All of those people have got parents. All of those people have got um, children, dependents, mm. you know, people that depend on them. And that's the economy that he fed. And when I bumped into Usjula, uh, we spoke about Alive Vamp earlier. Andy, there were friends like these, by the way, Usjula, guys, for those who don't know. Oh. Oh, you didn't know. Oh, we know. Oh, you knew. I knew. Oh. I'm just saying, but you know, it's simdom. Oh, simdom can do mundo. I can't assume zega zega. No shy voice. You know what I mean? So people thought it was Trevor Gumby at some point. Um, yeah, seriously, they did. You know, he had to say, you know, I'm not the guy who does the yeah. voice on on thing with you. It's Chula Jamin. And, and for those who don't know, zega zega is go ask Ntando, mm. go ask Chula. Oh, sorry, mm. go ask Ntando and Trevor. Trevor Kumbi. Mm. But anyway, continue. Yeah, so I bumped into Ustrula with uh, his daughters, his twins, you know, so the one Beautiful was sick. Twins. 
So he had to take them to the pharmacy because you know how twins are. The one gets sick and then it passes it on to the other one. And um, what he said to me is that, you know, he feels at peace because he was doing the, the memorial. You know, he was doing all the all the visuals that you guys saw yeah. at the memorial. He directed he all of that production, stuff. You know, yeah. He did the whole entire production. He also did the production um, for Songs in the Key of Love, my wife's um, al album. Um, when we did a, a live listening and playing of the album, he also did that as well. Um, and he's done many other productions after um, Urban Brew and after Live Amp. And oh. he said oh, yeah, he I'm went sorry. to... Um, Kenan's last performance. He felt like he was there for his last performance. And I just like all of us to take a moment for all of the people that worked with him, you know, who now need to seek other, you know, um, employment and need to go and play in different bands and everything else. And they've dedicated a lot of their lives to working and making sure that Kenan is known as um, one of the, our best performers in South Africa. So please take a moment to think of them and... Um, yeah. Wrapping it up, um, core writers, a.k.a. Bali and Sun. Sun, imagine. And obviously live instrumentation, Zerok, Tepo Terimuloi, Shox, Mzizi, Shivo Manzini, Earl Breezy, Shivo. and Jesus. Shivo. And um, shout outs to Sony Music. Of the cousins. And big up to the beautiful sleeve design. And for those that are coming up with conspiracy theories, guys, That's forget that. Poppy. Our brother is gone. The beautiful sleeve on the cover of the album has got nothing to do with him having known that he was going to pass on. And let, Poppy, let go of all artist, of those conspiracy please. theories, guys, please. Karabo Poppy does not deserve that. Yeah. That's a brilliant artist, one of our greatest artists in South Africa. Let's celebrate the work of Karabo Poppy and follow at Karabo Poppy. And yeah, follow at the Hustlers Corner. Like and subscribe if you haven't got that. You La know. Vida Nota, the authority. <laughs> I think Nota at the end of uh, March, what I don't know how many episodes is done, he has yeah. to send us an invoice. We no, have, we have to pay Nota, guys. I'm not, a, I'm, not I'm the voice that's in. I so know, it only no, makes no, sense no, that I invoice them. We have, to, we have them. to pay you and, and thank you for your contributions. <laughs> and for those, just like when Peniel started on this platform, who didn't want Peniel, look at how Peniel is flourishing right now. Trust me, Nota, if you want to pay me, Nota is in good hands, guys. If you want to pay me, go to patreon.com forward slash at La Vida Nota, and you can donate whatever you feel. Say, say that again. Patreon.com, which yeah. is P-A-T-R-E-O-N forward slash dot com forward slash L-A-V-I-D-A-N-O-T-A and then you can contribute um, to ensuring that it's easier for me to get around and do all these podcasts and be a guest. And yeah. Proud of you, bro. Thank you so much. Thank and you thank very you, much. Thank you so much for believing in all of us, you know, and giving us um, the platform. You are, you are bigger than the SABC. From my first platform, from my first event that I did, that was a big event, the, the earliest album launch. Oh, when, you when I was 18, <laughs> when I was still in high school. And then I had to leave your show on DJ Smooth's breakfast show on YFM and then put on my Rao Call uniform and go and be go with the rest of the school. class. <laughs> <laughs> like Sim Dope. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Actually, guys, episodes come out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mondays, um, Tuesdays, um, MWF, and then uh, our affiliated podcasts are House of Sankofa with Paul Mnisi. Check that out. And how is he? Uh, he's really he's okay. Is I mean, it, since after better? after um, Tibbs, Tibbs is passing, obviously, I mean, it's it's still it's still fresh, but yeah, he'll he'll be fine. And check out the Penuel show. Um, check out House of Sankofa. Check out Virtual Mukuku. We'll be introducing more podcasts. I think. I just need more time to convince Nota to eventually do the Authority podcast or Everybody Hates I'm Nota already doing the Authority. Podcast. I'm already doing that. Oh, it's, is it? I'm doing it. My next guest is, is Lady Zamar. Oh, nice. So it's live on Mzansi A Lister at oh, um, nice. 6 p.m. Um, till 9 p.m. Um, on the 28th of February. Nice. And we'll be speaking about surviving cyberbullying. Nice. Um, yeah, so Lady Zamar is my second guest. My first guest was Fiesta Black. Nice. So Music Business Authority, catch us on Zanzi A Lister. It will be live broadcast, so you need to watch it live. You need to get into the comments. We'll be, you know, engaging with you. And the comments are going to be open on that. So that's the only place where you can actually openly comment um, to Lady Zama, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, she's giving me that access. So nice thanks one. to her. Um, we're going to put a link in the description that takes you there to the Mzanze A Lister podcast. And congratulations to Mzanze A Lister, the owner of the podcast. Sydney. Le a legal practitioner. Sydney is about to graduate. I don't know if he's graduated mm. yet. No, he's graduated. He's but a lawyer, yeah. actually, by the yeah. way. And congratulations on your 100,000 subscribers, bro. Very, very proud of you. Well done. Thank you. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.
This is The Hustler's Corner.